my body is my temple. Mmm, my body is my temple. Well, why are you stuffing it with junk then? This temple happens to like crisps. Well, I think that temple needs to get fit, and I have got just the challenge for you. Uh, this is a maths programme, not an exercise video. I know, but I've come up with a perfect challenge where we can find out about distance time graphs and get you fit at the same time. Go on, off you go. Go on. Mm -hmm. Oi! Distance time graphs are graphs which plot distance against time. That sounds a bit obvious, but anyway, interpreting them can be slightly more difficult, and I do think it's something worth knowing about. Now, I could show you a graph like this, but first, let's get our head around the axes and how they're labelled. Well, we've got the horizontal axis, which is the one across the bottom, and it's also known as the x-axis, and this is labelled as time, in seconds. Then of course we've got our vertical axis which is the y-axis and this is labelled as distance in metres. Now here we've got a journey and it's got four different sections or legs. So let's start with the first leg and that starts at 0, 0 and travels along to 550. Now by drawing a triangle on the graph it can help us see a bit more clearly what's going on. So, we can see that we have travelled 50 metres in 5 seconds. And from this, we can actually work out the speed. Because speed equals distance divided by time. Or S equals D divided by T. And since the distance is in metres and the T is in seconds, that means that the units for the speed will be metres per second. So let's have a look at this first leg of the journey. And we can see that it's 50 divided by 5 and that gives us a speed of 10 metres per second. Right, let's have a look at the second leg of the journey. Now this starts at 5.50, and if we go along, it finishes at 10.75. So that means the distance travelled is 25 metres, and the time taken is 5 seconds. So, the speed will be 25 divided by 5, 5 metres per second. Okie doke third leg. Well this starts at 10.75 and finishes at 12.75 which means the distance travelled is nothing. Oh dear. And the time taken is two seconds. So that means our speed is zero divided by two which is naught meters per second. And this means that we're not moving anywhere. Whenever you see a flat horizontal line like this in a distance time graph, it means your speed is zero. You are staying put. Right. Well, I could show you more about this graph, but I don't think that's as fun as getting Dave off his backside, breaking a sweat, and getting in his own distance time data. And that's why I've sent him off to Queen's School in those weird shorts. Ah, here we go. What team do you support? Awesome. Hi guys, are uh, you here to help me with my challenge? Yeah. Yeah, who's got the instructions then? Yeah, you need to read this and we'll do some warming up at the same time. Some warming up? Yeah. Okay. Today I want to see how good an athlete you are. Are you a sprinter? Are you a long distance runner? Or are you a couch potato who spends too much time stuffing his face with crisps and chocolate? Chocolate or stretching? Chocolate, <laughs> chocolate, definitely. Once you've finished your warm up, you'll be going to run 200 metres. Oh, against Dizzy. Right. Then 1,500 metres. Oh, and that would be against Andre. And I'm going to compare you against the students using distance time graphs. And by the way, you're not stretching hard enough. How can she possibly know? Come on then, do this one. <sighs> Where's my chocolate? Three, two, one, go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Three. It's not working. Six. No, nearly, nearly, nearly. Yes, yes, yes. You ready? Yeah. 
Okay, let's go. I'm already winning. I'm already winning. How you doing, Andre? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Feeling a little burn already. Yeah, it's just, it's just a warm up. Yeah. But you, you go ahead. Yeah, alright. And then um, I'll catch up. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Dave, that's not going to impress anyone. But hopefully the graphs will tell a different story. Let's have a look. Let's have Izzy first. And the beginning of the race starts at 0, zero. And then we can see after 6 seconds, she has travelled 12 metres. After 15 seconds, she has travelled 75 metres. After 33 seconds, she has travelled 183 metres. And she's run her 200 metres in 39 seconds. That's pretty good. Let's see how Dave's done and let's plot his graph on the same axis. Oh dear. Well you can see that after 6 seconds they've travelled the same distance. But after 15 seconds he's only travelled 57 metres. And if you look at the graph you can just see how far is he, that's the purple line, is in the lead. Looking at these graphs it looks like the race is lost between 15 and 33 seconds. Now is his average speed during that time can be found from this graph. We can see that her distance changes from 75 to 183 metres and her time changes from 15 to 33 seconds. So that means she had travelled 108 metres in 18 seconds. So take 108, divide it by 18 and we get an average speed of 6 metres per second. Let's see how Dave was doing during the same period and we can see he travels 72 metres in, again, a time of 18 seconds. And that gives him an average speed of 4 metres per second. Well, let's have a look at the distance runner, Andre. Maybe Dave's done a bit better against him. As Andre's running further, we just need to have a different scale on our axis. And let's have a look. Andre's this top line. So we can see that it's actually split into four main sections. The first section runs from naught seconds to 100 seconds. Then we've got this second section which is from 100 to 200. And he's actually slightly faster there than he was in this first section. Then we've got the third section up here which is from 200 to 250 where he's a bit quicker still. And then in the final section, in this final 100 seconds, his speed actually decreases a little bit. Right, so how's Dave done? Well, oh dear. We can see that he gets slower and slower and even slower until he's practically crawling at the end. I'm going to have a word with him. How did I do? Well, you're obviously not a sprinter, so let's just forget about that one. But when it comes to long distance running, your start is slower than Andre, your speed in the middle is less than Andre, and you can't keep on running for as long as Andre. So to be honest, it's fairly pathetic. Thanks. But you never know. You might be better on the rowing machine. Um, uh, uh, a row machine? <sighs> I'm going to be so much faster than you. We'll see. We'll see. OK, Dave, this is a straight race between you and Phil. 500 metres, you ready? Yeah, you ready? Yep. OK, three, two, one. We're not. Yeah, that's nice one, Phil. Well done. Oh, it doesn't look like Dave is much of a rower either. And I bet the graph shows us that as well. So let's have a look at Phil's first. Let's have a look at his distance time graph. And we can see that in the first leg of his journey, he has travelled 200 metres in 50 seconds and that's at a constant speed of 4 metres per second. And moving on to his second leg, he has travelled 300 metres in 50 seconds, and that's a constant speed of 6 metres per second. 
And let's compare that to Dave's. Let's have a look. Oh dear, Dave. Well, we can see that in Dave's graph, he's got two sections that are straight lines and neither of these are actually as steep as Phil's. So it's pretty clear that Dave was slower throughout the race. Now that is what too many crisps can do to you. Okay, you started slower, you traveled less distance and you didn't even finish. You are pathetic, man. But I was faster. No, how can you be faster and still lose the race, Dave? Have a look at the graph around one minute and I bet you I was going faster than Phil was. All right, I'll take a look, but I think you might be wrong. Right, well, let's have a look at how fast Dave was going at about a minute. At a minute, that's 60 seconds, which is this point. Ah, and at this point, the graph is a curve. So what we need to do is place a tangent on this curve and find out where that tangent is the steepest. Now, if we draw a right angle triangle onto our tangent, that means we can find out the speed at that point. Now, our triangle joins the coordinates 60, 60 and 100, 320. And as you can see, the triangle has a height of 260 meters and the time is 40 seconds. So we can use the speed distance time formula to work out the speed. So that's 260 meters divided by 40 seconds, and that gives us six and a half meters per second. Now let's see if Phil was ever going faster than that. Oh, well his fastest speed was six meters per second. Incredibly, Dave is actually right for a change. Amazing. Right, I've got some news for you. At one minute, you were rowing faster than Phil. In fact, it was the fastest that either of you travelled at any point in the race. Yes. <laughs> I told you I was faster than you. <laughs> All right. On your bike. Sorry? You know, get on the exercise bike. Let me beat you. Oh, no. So what do you need to remember about distance time graphs? Well, the steeper the graph, the faster the object is moving. And remember, if there's a flat horizontal line, then the object is not moving at all, it's still. To work out the speed of an object, you need to draw a triangle so that you can look at the change in distance and the change in time over that particular section. And to work out the speed, of course, you use distance divided by time. So in this case, we've got 100 divided by 20, which gives us five meters per second. But if you've got a curved graph, you can always find the speed at any particular point by drawing a tangent onto the graph and then working out the gradient of the tangent. And the point where the tangent is the steepest, that is where the object is going fastest. But if it's Dave, don't expect your tangent to be that steep. Oh, more of a swimmer. Ah, uh, yeah. I prefer running. Yeah, the squash is all right. Tennis. Racquetball. Volleyball. Pull. Ballet. Ballet. <laughs>